I just hate throwing things out, unless they're broken. But nowadays, with electronics becoming outdated so quickly, we just have to. Look at my laptop. It developed a software issue, but since its specs are so unimpressive, instead of fixing it, I got a new one. Or my phone? The screen is slightly cracked, the battery life's non-existent, but it works. Except, Android version is old, and a lot of apps are no longer supported. So, it's been time. Or is it? I've got one idea. Let's make it happen. Let me open up the laptop. There are a few usable parts here. For example, I have already taken out the hard drive to use as external storage. But today, I'm here for the screen. It turns out that if you get a driver board such as this, the screen can be driven using HDMI signal and used as a second monitor for example. Just make sure it comes with a compatible connector. Screens vary. The second piece of the puzzle is an MHL adapter, which will enable my Galaxy 4 to screen mirror via HDMI. And you might be starting to see where this is going. The plan is to make a more versatile and fancier version of an E-frame. As usually, I'm using some reclaimed wood as well. The start is quite standard. Sand the wood, cut at 45 degree angles, and glue. But what's different in my frame is that I need to contain the screen and electronics within. So let's make some space. The screen can now sit nicely. The problem with reclaimed wood always is nail holes. But there is nothing some wood filler could not hide. Right, while that is curing, let's deal with the back cover. I want to have flexibility to keep the frame on a flat surface or hang it on the wall. So I will need to install removable legs as well as wall hooks. Next, I need to allow for an easy access to the phone. So I will make a little hatch. Nothing fancy, but it will keep the phone hidden and accessible at the same time. I will add some hinges later, but now it's time to do some carving. The electronics are going to be powered by a phone charger, so I need to make room for a micro USB connector. Ooh, just perfect. I also carved a couple of holes for a magnet, and the washer while I was at it. They will keep the hatch closed. And as for opening, a little handle. This completes the list of wooden parts. To finish off, I need to sand everything and apply a wood stain. We can now move to electronics which by the way proved to be a major pain in the butt. The first adapter I picked up on eBay was not compatible with my phone, even though the seller claimed it was. Turns out it is a 5-pin device, as opposed to 11. So I got a different one, claiming to be 11-pin. No luck again, same thing. Turns out you can get a little adapter. 
you can see the connector is slightly different. But the first MHL adapter still did not work at all, while the second only sometimes. Finally I got my hands on a proper MHL adapter compatible with my phone, but the problems did not stop there. The driver board I showed you in the beginning came with a broken ribbon cable, so I had to fix that. But more annoyingly, though not surprisingly, the supply voltage was wrong. I shopped around to get one which worked at 5 volts, but it was a lie. It needs above 7 volts, so I also need a voltage boost module. How well? The adapter is a little too thick, but thankfully we don't need the cover, just the guts. Yeah, I can imagine the electronics straddling inside. Luckily, I have some foam which happens to be just the right thickness. Let's cut some holes. As you know, the phone will go in the middle, but there's places for other stuff too. MHL adapter, driver board and its controls, HDMI cable, voltage booster, and power connector. I just need to do some soldering, basically to make sure everything gets power, namely the driver board and MHL adapter. It has a micro USB port for power, so I can just use the cable from one of the other adapters, which did not work. Let's get to it. One last thing before assembly is to glue the washer and the magnet in their places. And now everything can be put together. A little bit of hot glue will prevent the screen from moving side to side. And the pressure from the foam will keep it pressed against the wood, leaving no gaps around the outline. With electronics in place, let me add a couple of hinges to the phone hatch and screw things together. And this is it. I love how the frame itself turned out. Looks really pleasant. Rustic. But when I plug the cable and open the hatch, you can see there is nothing rural about this. Since the whole thing is driven by a phone, you can connect Bluetooth devices, such as a mouse, to never need to access the back or an audio device such as a speaker, or as in my case, a headset. And then, just turn on your favorite media. Not only does it look good, but it works like a charm. Well, except for this white spot. I must have been too rough pressing the screen in place. This is really sad, actually. But it is what it is. There are a number of phone apps to turn your pictures into slideshows, and I can enjoy mine on a frame standing like this, or hanging on a wall. But as I said, this is not just an electronic picture frame. You can watch your favorite DIY videos on it, stream the hottest TV series, watch your home videos, or be creative and say, put yourself in a Harry Potter poster. I'm happy that I took on this project. 
Both the laptop and the phone would be lying in the trash otherwise. Instead, they're reminding me of my best memories. Thanks for watching. Leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe if you wanted to see more. Bye for now.